Here's what you need to know before visiting Copenhagen. It's gonna get expensive. Copenhagen is really up there amongst the most expensive cities in the world. And especially on food and accommodation, you can really expect to be spending a lot. So I just want to give you like some standard rates for hotels and for food so you can get an idea of exactly how much you can expect to spend. But then I'll also touch on what you can actually do to save some money while you're here. So a standard hotel room here in Copenhagen will set you back around 150 to 300 US dollars. It really depends on location and season. And if you want to do it as cheaply as possible, a hostel will set you back around $50. Airbnbs are usually not cheaper than hotels in Copenhagen, but they can be an option for you if you want like a kitchen and want to cook a bit of food for yourself. Because if you're eating out at let's say a cheap-ish restaurant, you can probably expect to spend around 20 to 30 US dollars per person. So if you have a five night stay here in Copenhagen and we do some quick maths, you can easily spend a thousand dollars for your trip as a couple, just on food and accommodation. And that's even if you're staying and eating at the less expensive places. So what can you actually do to make your stay here a bit cheaper? Well, for hotels, it's gonna be really hard. They just are very expensive. Traveling in off season helps a little bit. And you can also look at perhaps hotels a little bit away from the city where you can then take the train back into Copenhagen to explore. That's gonna be a little bit cheaper, but of course you're gonna be spending money on transportation. So you could also try finding the cheapest place you can in the city center and then just walk or bike everywhere so you will save money on transportation. But we'll talk more about getting around and transportation in just a little bit. With food, cooking a few meals or making some sandwiches here and there for yourself can really go a long way. Eating out in Copenhagen gets really expensive really fast. But if you're not quite into cooking all the time, you could also look for like pre-made sandwiches and meals in supermarkets or 7-Eleven or kiosks or things like that. And probably don't aim for street food here in Copenhagen as a way to save money. Go for street food if you want a great experience and some great food because street food here in Copenhagen is, I guess, more fancy. So it's really not less expensive than eating out at a restaurant. And since we're talking about restaurants, I guess we should talk about tipping. I mean, it's always nice to know the norm wherever you are traveling. And in Denmark, we don't really tip at all. You can do it, of course, if you want to, but it is not expected. Generally, waiters are paid a fair enough wage, so they don't really rely on tips for their salary. And usually how it works is the whole staff will pile together all the tips at the end of the night and then share it evenly. So if you had a great experience with one person, your tip won't fully go to that person. Oh, and tips are also taxable here in Denmark. So 40% of your tip will actually go to the Danish government. So thank you. And since you don't really need to tip, you really don't need to take out cash at all. Everywhere you go, they will accept your credit card. You can pay with your phone, Apple Pay, whatever you use. There are very few scenarios where you actually need cash. But if you really want to or really need to, then look for like a regular bank's ATM and not these like generic ATM stations as they usually have a bit of a higher fee when taking out cash. And for good measure, our currency here is the Danish kroner and one dollar is equal to around seven kroners. But okay, let's talk about the best time to visit Copenhagen. The weather in Denmark is notoriously bad, cold, gray and rainy. So if you want to have the best chances of nice weather, go somewhere between May and September. You're still left at the mercy of the weather gods though and you can never really know what to expect. As an example, this year we had an incredibly hot June with 20 to 25 degrees and fully blue skies pretty much the whole month. 
and that was followed by one of the wettest months ever in July and it was basically raining every single day. Another great reason to visit in those months is that the city just feels a lot more alive. As good weather and sunny days are quite rare, us Danes really go all in when they are here. So we use the city a lot and go out and hang out outside all the time and that just really gives a good vibe and feel to the whole city. I mean, right now it is perfectly sunny outside. A beautiful hot day today and yesterday it was raining like crazy. But as we usually say here, there's no such thing as bad weather, just poor choice of clothing. I often hear from people who visit during like fall or winter that the city feels a little bit lifeless or boring and that the people that they meet are a little bit cold. And that's probably true. I mean, winter depression is a real thing here. And during the winter months, we really just want to stay inside and watch a movie and hang out with friends and family. And I guess we're just a little bit more grumpy. July and the first weeks of August are peak season here, as that's usually when most people have their vacation. So it will be the most busy and the most expensive. But this is also probably the time where you will have the best chances for nice weather. If you go in like fall or winter or early spring, I can almost guarantee you that it will be cold, gray and rainy. And during those winter months the sun rises very late and it sets really early around like 4 or 5 p.m. So it just feels dark all the time. Put that in contrast to the summer months where the sun rises super early and sets like late at night at 10 p.m. Those late sunsets are really special here in Copenhagen. But December can be quite nice though if you're into the whole Christmas vibe and Christmas markets and decoration and all that. But summertime really is the winner here and if you're flexible with your dates going in June or perhaps late August would be my recommendation for the best time to go. Getting to the city from the airport is super easy, pretty much no matter where you're staying. In most cases you'll be taking the metro and that will take you just about 20 minutes to get from the airport to the city center. It should also be quite easy to figure out and if you have any problems there are usually like some employees there who you can ask any questions you might have. And when you are in the city the metro is great for getting around especially if you're going a little bit longer distances. The metro system in general is quite easy to figure out with the lines and where to go and you can use the website journeyplanner.dk to see which train to get on and when it leaves and so on. The only thing that's a bit weird is the ticketing system as it's like based on zones depending on where you are going from and to. But if you're just staying around Copenhagen, it usually isn't an issue as that will always be within the same zone. But you can of course also do a bit more like the locals do and rent a bicycle. It's definitely the best way to get around and see the city. If you're just taking the metro to get around from one attraction to the next attraction, the next attraction, you're really missing out. Biking and even just walking a lot is really how I recommend many of you should get around when you're in Copenhagen. But if you want to rent a bicycle here, it's pretty important that you just read up a little bit about the rules and laws about how to actually drive a bicycle here. Us locals are pretty crazy in the bike lanes, especially going to and from work, just going full speed and expecting you to follow the rules and drive how you should. And I mean, it can get kind of dangerous if you don't follow the rules as that can lead to accidents. So a quick Google search here will give you all the information you need. And it's really quite simple, just important not to ignore. And for an even greater experience here in Copenhagen, you can take your bicycle outside the city center. Visit the neighborhoods of Nørrebro, Østerbro, Vesterbro and Frederiksberg. There's a ton of things to do here, but perhaps less of the famous tourist attractions. But that also means that you'll have a lot fewer other tourists around and have a more calm and nice experience, I guess. Because of course, Copenhagen is known for Nyhavn and the Little Mermaid. But what else is there to see and do in Copenhagen? Well, I already made a video all about this, which you can watch right here. And in this video, I share what I do and show my foreigner friends when they come and visit here to Copenhagen to both see all the famous tourist attractions, but also get a bit more of a local experience. I hope you enjoyed the video and have a great trip to Copenhagen.